you know, Fed rate cut and what that means for Asia central banks. I, I do think that um, you know, as the Fed, as we get more clarity from, um, from the, in terms of direction of, of the Fed and in terms of their next move, it should still open up some room for Asian central banks uh, to ease their respective monetary policies, and partly because um, you know, there should be less concern over, over their respective currencies. So I still do think that we should be looking for slightly easier monetary conditions uh, in Asia uh, once the Fed starts to take the lead. Um, but you know, you know, you noted that uh, one of our uh, probably slightly more contrarian views coming into this year, or even last year, was that in this cycle the dollar probably could remain somewhat resilient. Uh, historically, in so-called soft landing episodes, if you look at last couple of decades, they're quite rare. But if you look at those episodes, historically, dollar doesn't tend to depreciate that much. Uh, because the U.S. economic growth is strong, U.S. Uh, interest rate remains somewhat elevated. So from a growth and interest rate differential perspective, they tend to support the dollar in those so-called soft landing episodes. So I think that the, what, I, what actually is different this time around is not the Asian currencies are not appreciating. It's actually the dollar is actually positively correlated um, with, uh, with the performance of U.S. equity market because it's a soft landing narrative rather than recession narrative around those rate cuts bets. So that's why I think um, you know, Asian currencies have been a little bit more on the back foot uh, in this cycle. We do think that could remain the case. Um, and that does mean that the domestic demand part of the, uh, of the, of the, um, of the Asian economies could be a little bit weaker than in typical easing cycles. And that's why we, I think from an investment perspective, we have preferred to put more of our bets around uh, sectors that are very correlated with global growth, with U.S. growth with what's going on in the global manufacturing capex space.